Hi everybody and welcome to the audio version of the Exploration Newsletter for the week of October 9th, 2020. Our newsletter is compiled each week by editor Heidi So and associate Julius Ramos. I'm Renee Meredith, the COO of Exploration Group, and here is the news for this week. Triller signs deal with European licensing hub ICE, plans to streamline data. Triller announced a multi-territory licensing deal with European licensing hub ICE on October 2nd. The agreement covers Triller in more than 160 territories for musical works represented by collection societies PRS for Music, GEMA, STIM, and IMRO, along with several music publishers, all of which are members of what is known as the ICE Core. The deal reflects the essential value that songwriters bring to digital platforms like Triller, and it also includes a partnership to develop data reporting to ensure that royalties are distributed quickly and accurately to the rights owners. ICE offers publishers, collective management organizations, and other rights holders a suite of services, including copyright administration and online processing for multi-territorial licenses. It represents more than 330,000 rights holders to whom it has paid out upwards of 1 billion euros since 2016. The Mechanical Licensing Collective announces location of its Nashville headquarters. The Mechanical Licensing Collective, better known as the MLC, officially announced that its Nashville-based headquarters will be located at Market Street Enterprises, 333 building, at the corner of 11th Avenue and Pine Street in the heart of the Gulch neighborhood, home to several music-related companies, including Music Row. The new location also places the MLC close to downtown, where a number of larger music companies have based their administrative teams, as well as to many colleges and universities, where the MLC intends to conduct regular outreach activities intended to help educate the next generation of music industry creators and professionals about the MLC's mission and about best practices for music data management. Planning to occupy 17,800 square feet on the second floor of the five-story building, the MLC is set to open its new headquarters in spring of 2021. RIAA unveils mid-year 2020 Latin report. Streaming is helping sustain the industry. According to a new report by the RIAA, Latin music revenues in the U.S. increased 18.6% in the first half of 2020 to $296.1 million, marking the fourth consecutive year for double-digit percentage growth at retail value in the Latin music market. Streaming now accounts for 96% of the market. The report also notes that Latin music continued to grow its share of overall U.S. music revenues to 5.2% and total streaming revenues grew 20.3 to $285.2 million. Similar to the overall U.S. market, the biggest driver of growth for Latin music in the past year was paid streaming music subscriptions, with revenues rising 27.6% to $196.2 million. Paid subscriptions now account for over two-thirds of the Latin music streaming market in the first half of 2020. Led Zeppelin wins Stairway to Heaven copyright battle as Supreme Court refuses to hear the case. The U.S. Supreme Court on Monday declined to hear the copyright battle over Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, leaving in place a ruling that rejected infringement allegations over the 1971 song. The justices denied a petition aimed at reviving the case, a six-year battle over claims that the song's writers Jimmy Page and Robert Plant plagiarized the song's iconic intro from the 1968 song Taurus by the group Spirit. The decision follows a March victory for the group in which the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld a jury verdict finding that the song did not infringe on Taurus. Journalist Michael Skidmore had filed the suit in 2014 on behalf of the estate of Randy Wolf, the late spirit frontman. After losing at trial, Skidmore appealed to the Ninth Circuit. The Supreme Court then declined to hear without comment. House Judiciary Hearing Reveals Need for Copyright Law Updates Last week, the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing titled Copyright and the Internet in 2020. Reactions to the Copyright Office's Report on Efficacy of 17 U.S.C. Section 512 After Two Decades. Picking up on the ongoing Senate IP subcommittee hearings on the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, 
the hearing gave committee members an opportunity to dive deeper into the Copyright Office's report on Section 512 and get feedback from lawyers, copyright policy experts, and creators on how the DMCA is holding up 22 years after its enactment. While the hearing's witnesses did not all agree on what exactly needs to be done, it was clear that parts of the law governing online copyright infringement were in need of updating. Report. Q2 music streaming revenues declined quarter on quarter. According to the latest analysis by research firm Counterpoint Research, the global music streaming market was worth $6.7 billion in the second quarter of 2020. That's growth of 13% year-on-year, but a decline of 2% quarter-on-quarter, the first-ever quarter-on-quarter decline in terms of revenues for music streaming. An important caveat is that CounterPoint has not broken this figure down into subscriptions versus advertising. Ad revenues took a major hit in Q2, but subscriptions seem to be decelerating, not declining. Spotify, for example, saw its subscription revenues grow by 3% quarter-on-quarter in Q2, but its ad revenues fell by 11%. And from our random rambling section, SheShreds.com has an amazing article about female artists and the media. It delves deep into the history of how women have been marketed to the public, from the rise of black consumerism with Mamie Smith and Sister Rosetta Tharp being the first music artist to play a massive stadium, to the eventual demise of the Guitar World annual bikini issue. The She Shreds article is not to be missed. And finally, here's my little morsel for you. Axis TV had one of my guitar heroes, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, as the host of A Year in Music 1989. And a lot happened in music that year. Madonna took on the Vatican, Michael Jackson released Leave Me Alone, and Motley Crue came back from rehab with Dr. Feelgood. But something else happened in 1989 that would change the world for young women many years later. In September of 1989, Aerosmith released the song, Janie's Got a Gun, about a young girl abused by her father. Years later, Steven Tyler and Youth Villages came together to form Janie's Fund, an organization committed to helping young women find safety, stability, and a future free from abuse and neglect. It's an organization that Exploration and myself are incredibly proud to support. For more information about Janie's Fund and what they do, check out janiesfund.org. That's all for this week's newsletter. Thank you all for listening, and don't forget to be kind to each other.